Okay. Go to Devil's butthole. Sub. Oh. There's a few beasts down there. Some ghouls. Neve's force near Davor's abyss. Some dog birds. Signs of beastly feasting were not hard to find. Cowbirds. Countless paw and claw tracks were impressed in the blood-stained snow. Mm. Among the boulders, bones picked clean were strewn about. Gascon lifted one from the ground. Empty inside, he said. Something sucked out the marrow. Ooh. Meave's soldiers feigned indifference to the grisly sight. They marched on, their stepped rhythm unwavering, a song on their lips. Yet hearing a slight tremolo in their voices, Meave knew they merely sought to drown out their fear. Mm. A moment later, a commander's horn sounded, the signal to halt. The queen galloped to the fore of the column and found herself at the edge of a vast, round hole in the ground. She could not see the bottom. Me drew her reins tight to prevent her mount from taking even one step forward. What is this? A crater? A desiccated lake? Mine? A mine of the strip variety, Gabor explained. Treasures we picked and shoveled for here. Diamonds. Till we happened on the beasts, that is. What now? Orion's a dam. Holds back a lake. If we can break it, water will rush in, fill the abyss and the tunnels from which the beasts emerge. Just need to get around the mine first. Way down's on the other side. Meave squinted and gazed into the distance. Indeed, there was the dam. And at its foot, a swarm of beasts roiled about. Her soldiers gazed at their queen expectantly, their arms at the ready. She knew well they would rush into battle, in spite of their fear. Gabor! Meave cried out over the whirling wind. Have you bards here in Mahakam? Of course, your grace! Then we shall give them good reason to compose this day, on the themes of courage, of heroism, of Lyria! Gee up! And with that cry, the queen spurred her mount, grabbed a banner, and raising it high over her head, rushed headlong at the horrid swarm. Mm. Oh. Well, we're flooding. Zor's delved deep into the abyss, and from it pulled diamonds of unsurpassed quality. These stones glistened at all the counts of the north, the jeweled crowns, capped scepters, chalices, and swords. Some stayed in Mahakam, though in more mundane incarnations, as drill bits or crystal cutters, for example. Yet the days of the diamonds have long passed. Now only monsters crawl in the abyss, feasting on this man here. Gain seven charges on your old catapult without it being destroyed. Keep it well maintained on all sides. Start to rush now. Okay. No. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, carry you, carry you, carry you, carry you. Here's the way down. We need to break through and destroy the dam. There are units adjacent to this one. Gain one charge, then damage a random enemy by five. By two. If this unit's charge count is seven, I win. So I guess flame Watch throwing. your heads. <laughs> Does this count as a unit? Because I can't move that. No, it does not. So I guess. Catch! Now it'll count. Okay, cool. Sweet. Excellent. Let's. Well, we might as well get our beer out, actually. It's his knickers. Let's. You know what? Just let's kill this. A naked. And now it's dead. Um, I guess Mandrake, so we can get a drama again boy. and again. Let's get again. that thing out, I guess. And now it's boosted, so the grace monsters approach from all sides. I don't see any. Okay. The 
spawn and gets hit with a catapult. That's this fine. This harvest will be reaping um, black clad heads. Oh yeah, drink it from my graveyard. Necessity! <laughs> Inventions, mum. Okay. That's Cursed fine. traders. Yes, we'll put this thing next to the other one. The player thing will catapult it to death instantly. Okay. I guess we put this guy in. Okay, now I guess it's kind of folded. Excellent! The dam's about to give! I guess the heal card. It's kind of really weird because you can't get any cards out. This thing just insta kills them. Her Majesty is exceptional. Thanks. I don't know if I can play any more cards though. And what? Let the dog stun us flounder! Excellent work! Okay. Cool battle. And indeed, Bard sang of this battle soon after. For no claws or fangs could break through the wall of shields the Lyrians raised that day. And no scales could protect the beasts from the Lyrian stinging arrows and blades. Fight! Do not relent! Let us show these beasts! It is they who should fear us! The queen shouted. In the end, the beasts turned to flee, yet Meave's force cut off any chance of escape. A solid wall of men began to push the monsters ever closer to the edge of Davil's abyss. Pressed from all sides, the horrors began slipping over the precipice, screeching terribly as they fell. Mm. Blood. Silence came at last. The queen stood at the edge of the precipice, breathing heavily, leaning on her sword. From the depths of the mine came muted growls and groans. Let's flood the damn hole, hissed Gabor, before any other shite crawls out of it. Okay. A rush of icy water suddenly rose, then just as abruptly plunged into the mine, flooding the pit. And where once lay Davor's abyss, now lay Davor's pond. Meave descended back into the pass, exhausted and covered in beastly blood, yet also exceedingly pleased. She was one step closer to dwarven support in the war against Nilfgaard. Yeah. Once the Lyrians had put some distance between themselves and the now destroyed monster lair, Meave ordered her men to pitch camp. Then she sent the quartermaster off for food and drink. The soldiers lit campfires, then set aside their weapons. Soon after, lively music and song could be heard throughout the camp. Your Majesty, Rain had said from behind Meave's back. A messenger from the Elder in Chief. The Queen turned to see a dwarf in a richly adorned jerkin and a shako with golden seams. She stifled her laugh into a smile and lifted her chin proudly, expecting praise and a pledge of aid in the war against Nilfgaard. Ooh. My lady, your daring deeds have come to the Elder's attention, said the dwarf in a measured voice. He's positively irate and demands an explanation. Irate? But why? I and my men, we've aided you greatly. Elder Hoog awaits at the Long Bridge. You'd be ways not to keep him there any length of time. And with that, all the Queen's enthusiasm for a celebration was instantly gone. She waited until the fires expired and the songs died down, then gave the order to march. An asshole. Absolutely. Uh, first day of winter, gonna be my rough so cold, big axe frozen in her hands. Yeah, monsters taking wrong sides, touch the ground, huge losses. Okay. We'll return in spring. So we salty that we flooded the monsters. Okay, cool man, cool king. You raided us greatly, but we hate you. Oh, dead wolf. Okay, thanks to the key. There was a locked chest near, wasn't it? That's up there. Meet with Broover. The Grumpy Dwarf. Grumpy Grumpy. 
Welcome to the Lands of Clan Vidmar. Thanks. Welcome. Thank you. Chest is, excuse me. I'll grab this first. Bam. And then Frozen. All. Only the banner moves. Blown by the wind. Downright poetic. Prime material for a ballad. Perhaps even a whole saga. We did. We did up here too. Gazing towards the horizon, Meave noticed a dark shape outlined against the mantle of snow that lay on the ground. It proved a tower, toppled and broken in pieces. Around it lay the ruins of other buildings, blocks hewn out of basalt rock protruding from the permafrost. That'd be the Clan Vidmar ruins, said Gabor, hollering over the wind. Regiments, had the clan seat here till earth tremors turned all into dust. Hundreds of dwarves lived here once, and now... Not a living soul. Oh, ah, help! Said that guy. Save me! On the contrary, there was someone midst the ruins, and said someone was clearly in trouble. Meave ordered her men to find the unfortunate soul. They returned moments later, leading a dwarf whose teeth chattered. They had found him in a ruined building where he'd sought shelter from ghouls. Judging by his appearance, the dwarf had spent the better part of a week there. Marco Vidmar, they call me, he said, patting down unkempt hair that seemed to reach in all directions. I came here seeking a family heirloom, lost in the tremors and the chaos they caused. I ken the chamber where it ought to be, but, well, beasts made the lair there. I cannot drive them off on my own. Please but help me. bold warriors like you ought to cut them down in a jiffy. So, will you help? I guess. I too have lost my home, estate, said the Queen. So I understand well what you feel. I shall help you recover your heirloom. Call it a win. Mirko Vidmar's face lit up. Though he'd spent a week besieged and eating stale biscuits, and though there was a hoarfrost in his beard, he quickly trotted to the front of the column and led the Lyrian soldiers to the underground chamber. As promised, beasts awaited there. Beam. The underground chamber was decorated with numerous portraying reliefs portraying the heroic deeds of the clan. One was a dwarf slaying a bug thing with his bare hands. Another, rescuing miners from a collapsing cavern, collapsed cavern. And the third, wolfing down a succulent pork knuckle. Oh. Interesting. Wait, was this a short battle? I just forget to check. Let's do a hobo. Uh, we don't have a fire dude. Mm. Mm. The oh, ruins! A short battle. From there they come! Drive them back! Wait, so when I play a card, they steal my card? Is that what it says? So if I play the spy. We got a job to do. I should play it now. Okay, let's play a beer. You saw my beer. So I can't get that back. And it's just gonna stay over there, because I can't put damage to it. Mm, that's unfortunate. My beer. Beer, no. I'm betrayed by the beer. It's really awkward that he's going to steal all my cards. An army's a waste of time for one like me. Okay. Goodbye. What happens if I hit this guy? Stop using my beer. No, I can't get my beer back. 
That's unfortunate. Oh, that's unfortunate. We must trust each other. Left. Right. There's a time to reap, a time it's to sow, and a time to Left. Right. Left. Right. Oh, left. Right. Left. Right. I can't breathe for the first time. Uh, let's just drama boy. Get a drama Mom's boy. wasted time for one like me. I need to steal my drama boy. Curse you traitors. Stole that though. <laughs> Super buffing themselves. That's not great. Yay! Okay. Let's left, right. Sod it. Sod it all. Sod it. Sod it all. Does he have to pass if he can't find it? Oh, you can sacrifice a card. Let's move ability to get our dudes back. Okay, then we're left, right. Arbalist to your command. Arbalist. Then we're left, right. Hobo. I need to steal my hobo. What if I use Got a death time? wish. Okay, we got one card. Now you got your little boosty boys. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I win if I just pass. Let's get a move on before any others show up. Uh -huh. As soon as the fight was done, Mirko Vidmar ran towards a crate that stood on a pedestal, slipping on the now bloody floor. Mm -hmm. When the dwarf lifted the lid, Precious stones spilled out. Your heirloom? This? Asked the Queen, rather puzzled. I thought a pipe that belonged to your grandfather more likely. Mmm, golden frost. Seems to me Frothing. Brother Mirko was not wholly candid with us. This here's no heirloom, no family souvenir. It's the treasure trove of Clan Vidmar. We thought it gone for good. Pressed for the truth, Mirko admitted no family sentiment had prompted this expedition. The dwarf had planned to leave Mahakam and start a new life among humans. Yet he did not wish to do so without sizable capital. Mm. I can't stand to stay here a moment longer. The days, all of them, they're identical. Rise with the first cockscrow, march in double file to the latrine, crap on command, twelve hours down the shaft and home to sleep. Mirko complained. Want a wifey? Put on an application? In triplicate? Care to snip your beard? Elders got to approve it. You wanna add buttermilk, not cream to your mushroom soup? Clan council's got to debate it. How's a dwarf not to get balmy? I understand mm. the lad, no two ways about it. Gabor sighed. But I feel it's my duty to remind you that what Mirko's going and doing here, well, there are laws. Treasure's due the Elder in Chief, not to Mirko, that's one. Second, any dwarf that wants to leave, Mahakam can't take nothing but his breeches, his Dixie, and his coat. So, brief like, consider well afore you make your decision, Your Grace. Eh. Uh, treasure. You know what? Fuck the Elder Chief. When I was a lass of but twelve summers, my mother ordered me to go to a ball in a pink crinoline dress. In it, I resembled a meringue pastry. Meave smiled at the memory. So I cut it into ribbons and fled out my bedroom window. What's that got to do with? What I wish to say, Gabor, is that I understand him. And though it be against your laws, I shall allow him to take the treasure and leave. Mirko Vidmar had tears in his eyes as he thanked the Queen. Then he heaved the crate onto his back and deeply bent over under its weight, he trudged off towards human lands. Club's gonna die, but goodbye. Elden Chief's just been dickhead to me the whole time. Why would I? Why would I help him? You know? What a prick! Hello? What's up here? 